What's up, hybrids? Welcome back to another episode of the Phantom Hybrid Podcast. This is Hanako, and I am here with Anthony, Lori, and Mike, and we are discussing season three, episode four of The Boys. And starting again with another cringeworthy scene, this time courtesy of Soldier Boy. You! Let me tell you, you are not going to do that for the rest of the episode that we are discussing this. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Not. I forgot the scenes with my name on here. Hold on. Exactly. <sighs> and they and they they attack they attack one of my favorite shows as a kid, Solid Gold. I was like, oh really? I was tripping about the fact that they even brought Solid Gold. I was like, <sighs> like the whole nostalgia thing hit me. And then Soldier Boy yeah. is on stage doing his version of Rapture, of Rapture. by Blondie. And I was like, mm-mm. I, I, I just wanted to it. see. I just wanted to see Marilyn McCoo because you know I crushed on her real hard. Back in the day. I think we've talked well, about that 100% before. <laughs> I gotta probably see. It's like I heard her. I heard I know they said someone was doing it, but all I saw was Dean doing it. That's all I saw. That's all I heard. I, I could not separate the two. I was like, that's because because that's something that he would do. Like I could see Dean doing this shit in an episode of Supernatural mm-hmm. and sounding just like that. And I was like, I couldn't separate the two. I was like, it was cringeworthy, but I was like, that's Dean. Like, what is he doing? It's it's like it's just it's like he had he had to do that to exercise the exercise the demons of like a disco of a disco demon. There's, there's a disco demon, and he had to do that to like draw him out or some shit. And it's yeah. like Flash is fast. Flash is cool. I was like. They had the reverse reaction. I was thinking he was possessed by a demon. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. All I saw was Dean up there singing. That's that's all I saw. It was it was very um surreal. It very, yeah, it it was. Yeah. It was. But um apparently Blondie loved it because she uh tweeted about it after, ep- after the episode uh aired. She loved it. I was like, okay, you know these shows that that are putting these old classic hits into their shows like this one and then there's stranger things too i'm just like i'm just feeling all the nostalgia and i'm loving it running Run up, <laughs> Run up that hill up that hill do you know that that thing broke like records <laughs> for for time between returning the number one yeah yep. <laughs> It's just people are realizing how cool our music was. It's like we had the cool, we had, our generation had the coolest, like groundbreaking music, and everyone's just now realizing that shit. Right. Right. But um, yeah, cringe worthy. Anyway, so this is on in the back. I don't, and I don't know why this is on in the background. Why is Marvin watching a, a, a old solid gold Soldier Boy performance? He could be doing, he could be doing his research on anything else. Why the horrible performance? Anyway, I mean, I think that that's what was playing when whatever accident happened was when Soldier Boy did. So he was just kind of he was doing that just to kind of oddly reminisce about when his folks died, his family oh, died. Yeah, probably trying yeah, to get him there was into a, the right headspace. Yeah, it was a flashback yeah. with him sitting there watching it with his family. Okay, right. Okay, but um. Yeah, so we start the episode with the cringeworthy stuff. I mean, they had, they had a lot of um. This episode was very interesting. You have solid gold performances by Soldier Boy. You have Kimiko fighting and killing people with soup themed dildos, which. I, I don't know if you, if you want to say you know how some people say if if you're if you're killed while you're in the middle of sex what better way to go out but no I don't think they want to go out in quite that way not mm-mm, mm-mm. but anyway we'll we'll get to that in a moment <clears throat> um I don't know where do we want to start with this episode because you have the the uh, Vicky Newman stuff going on. You've got the Homelander just kind of like getting his very public affirmation that, hey, yeah, your fan base likes you as the 
tell it the way it is asshole like that was kind of a strong showing for you let me tell you also that doggone newscast that dude is like he sits there he says the things and as soon as the camera goes off he kind of shrinking there like is he gonna kill me is he gonna kill me and again Homelander's just looking at all this stuff like he's sitting there on camera rolling his eyes like do I really have to sit here through this do I really have to sit here through this yeah you know it it wasn't it's an obvious parody of reality but it wasn't that long ago that we had a a candidate or an individual who was populist who was somewhat unhinged and continues to be unhinged today but there are people out there that swear by him you know he's awesome and, and that's how they look at um homelander the the majority of people they're his fans it's the majority and and that's sad right because he's he's legitimately crazy and and becoming more and more unhinged as each episode goes on yeah not getting any better at all this is just and it's like you got going through what we just went through. It's like you can kind of see where this is going, and you're just like, oh god, like I'm reliving it all over again. Mm-hmm. It's some bullshit. Oh, Homelander, Homelander. Okay, before before we go get into other stuff, I got to talk about this whole thing with Butcher and Nina. You know coming together and making their plans for what they're going to do for Russia and just the way that they talk about Frenchie. Like, literally, Butcher is sitting there patting his head, treating him like a dog. That I, was, I saw that. I was like, bro, really? Like, you could have said something, wait, anything else. You could have said anything else, but just been like, yeah, he's a good boy. Yeah, good boy. And I was like, damn, want to sit up and want to sit up and fetch something too? Like, what I the fuck? was like, he better be glad Kamiko is not there. Because I already get the I already get the feeling Kamiko, even at the beginning of this episode, Kamiko really does not care much for Butcher. And then by the end of the episode, she really doesn't care much for him. But when they did that, I was like, I, th- it's already, it was already bad enough the way we saw little Nina treat Frenchie in the last episode, you know, but that was just kind of to let us know what kind of control she had over his character and a little bit of his background. Like he grew up abused. He grew up being treated, like he said, like a dog, like his dad kept him on a leash. So that was, I guess, necessary for us to see that, that, that control she has over him but butchers his it it was it was intentional because butcher was basically establishing that he was an equivalent to to nina like he was signaling to her that that we are on the same level that i am not i am not frenchy i am like you so frenchy is my pet now but you had oh that I mean it it is is cringeworthy, but Butcher knows what he's doing. He he did it intentionally to show her that. And um because that, that was part of establishing the relationship with Nina. I know. I know. <laughs> I know it, it's it's I terrible still to see. I did not like it. I still yeah. did not like it. I was like, Butcher, you fucker. Like, like if there's anybody on that crew who is loyal to Butcher, it's Frenchie. You don't Mm -hmm. treat that kind of loyalty like that. You find some other way to establish your dominance or some other way to establish the fact that you are just as equal or just as ruthless to little Nina as, as she is. I mean, hell, you were killing fucking soups. I don't recall little Nina doing that. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's necessary to show her because this is the first time that he's ever met her. So she can hear things, but not necessarily know or, or 
it's different when you see the person in person when he's there in front of you i know i know it's terrible we don't like it but butcher for all butcher's faults he knows how to play the game and he has a lot of them i said for all of them and the list is growing more and more by the episode yep (laughs) this whole this whole thing, okay, of course, Huey has figured out that Butcher is using Temp V. And of course, he threatens Huey that the rest of the crew better not find out or else, I, or else I'll fucking kill you. And at this point, we know he probably could. I don't think he would, but still. Then you go through this elaborate scheme. You get everyone to go to Russia. And all, all hell breaks loose. All hell breaks loose. Now, it ended up getting them what they think they needed, which was a weapon that could kill Homelander. It just wasn't exactly what they were looking for or what they thought they were looking for. But... You know, the the last episode, we talked about, um, Lori brought up the fact that people should be suing them. What about this whole ripoff of Bucky and the Winter Soldier? You know, until you said that, I didn't think about that. But you're absolutely right. Yeah, but I but see, yeah, let's, the, let's I, just rip this. This is take Bucky and Cap and let's put it all in one character and just right. call it yeah. a day. Yeah. Just well, take, allow take me to reintroduce myself. <laughs> well, I think the I think the biggest thing is that it the the understood agreement is that with Marvel and DC because the boys is DC is that they have a counterpart for each one so they have namor we have aquaman you know they've got century we've got superman so it's sort of a gentleman's agreement so i don't think they would necessarily get sued because if you look at you know cap you know and and you you look at the equivalent and then you go back and forth so it's it's an understood thing. One of the things that comic book writers over the years have had problems with is that when they're given uh, ideas on what the next story arc should be, is that they have to check with this, uh, this, this like this guidebook that they have to make sure that's not too similar in tone of something that the other side uh, did already in the story, so that it's not all the way down the line. Because it started back in the the late fifties, uh, early sixties, so. You know, you've got your equivalents of this and that. So I think that's, you know. And then and another way they get away with it here is I remember the boys, they always couched it as a parody of superhero tropes. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can do parodies and and fair use allows you to be free of of litigation. And, that, and I think that's how they've gotten away with it as much as they have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's clearly it's clearly a parody. I mean, they right. clearly put these similar heroes in this situation mm-hmm. where everything is absolutely freaking ridiculous. Right. Like they taken the premise of with uh, absolute what um, a- po- absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's what this is whole all the parody of. Mm-hmm. Like, what would really happen if superheroes had power? And popularity was the thing. And this is what you get. <laughs> you get insanity. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, yeah. And you I mean, get can... and you get the winter soldier and Captain America in one character. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Who's yeah, I mean, also havoc as well. And it's like, how many different superheroes can you put in one character? Well, they put a lot. And and the other thing is, is that that allows them, like for, with uh, Bill uh, Bill Willingham with Fables, they were able to get away with using all those classic characters because of public domain and the fact that they wrote them slightly uh, different than, you know, like Rose Red and all that. So, yeah, they, they have a history of that. Mm-hmm. Trope's gonna trope. Yeah. But, I mean, it was it was a it was an interesting way to do it. You know, the the whole internet broke because that was the episode where we are actually introduced to Soldier Boy in present day. And it consisted of Jensen Ackles walking out of the hyperbaric chamber or the cryo chamber with his ass hanging out. And literally, like, people were trying to watch this episode and, and Prime broke. They couldn't watch the episode for hours. 
<laughs> and what was it? Eric Kripke got on Twitter and said, uh, remember this as the day that Jensen's ass broke the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then, I mean, the and plus, he totally overshadowed, overshadowed poor Huey showing his ass. It's like nobody, nobody wanted to see Huey's ass, but his Huey's ass was right there. But no, everybody's focused on Jensen's ass. It's like so so let's talk about Huey's a, ass in this because Huey, we we get to see Huey's ass because as we mentioned in I think a couple of episodes uh before that um Huey does not make the best decisions. And in this episode, what happens? He he talks to Butcher about the V. The temporary V, Butcher tells him no, and Huey sneaks some anyway. And he gets powers of teleportation, teleportation. But of course, those powers mean that when he teleports, he teleports with no clothes on. So he just buck ass naked teleporting through a Russian secret lab. And yeah, at, at this point, this is where everybody on the team finds out that both he and Butcher are taking temporary V. Did you see the look on Mother's Milk's face when Butcher started shooting the laser eyes? He's looking like, because at first, what, you know, the soldiers are shooting at them and he he gets up and he's like, oi. And he starts walking and Frenchie and M.M. are both looking at him like, no. And then the bullets start ricocheting off of him and he does the laser eyes. And they're, they're both looking at him like, mother That's not going to be a pleasant conversation when it happens. Nope. When they finally sit down and have that conversation, I am fully expecting for some blows to be thrown. They can throw them all they want to. It's not going to fuck with Butcher. Butcher, I mean, <laughs> Butcher's invulnerable. You can punch him all you want to. And well, then only for it's 24 like, hours. Not, only for 24 right. hours. Not only, not only does he gain teleportation, but he gains the ability to punch through his soldier wearing full body, wearing body armor too. Like, completely through him. Like, shit, Huey. Okay. Like, damn. So it's like, I guess, I guess superpower, super strength is a given. Mm -hmm. Then you get like an extra. It's like, it's like a surprise in a Cracker Jack box. It's like, you never know what you're going to get. It's like, you can get laser eyes, you can get teleportation, you can get fishes, you, you can so you can be able to swim like a fish. You can get anything. You can basically get any variety of things. It's like your body could turn into a blob. You can get anything, but it's like you get you become invulnerable and you get super and you get super strength. So I don't I don't know I don't know about the invulnerability, but you do get the super strength and healing. You get super healing too. Yeah, because yeah, because his those his are, arm was his arm was healed just like that. Yeah, though I think those are like a given with V. And then, you know, everything else, like you said, is it's a random roll of the dice. I bet you he's glad that his arm healed, so now he doesn't have to walk around with that cast saying hashtag home light on it. Oh, my God. Uh... And sometimes, I know this is off the subject, but sometimes I think the V and temporary V gives you powers, sort of, they reflect your personality a little bit. Like, you know, Huey always wants to run. <laughs> he doesn't want to be where he is in certain situations. And this gives him the power to do that. Okay. And Butcher and, um, wants to be strong enough to kill Homelander. And, and he's a hothead. Right. Like I see what you did there. <laughs> ah. I see what you did there. <laughs> Yeah, that makes that makes, actually makes sense. It's like it, it just like just like Erskine said, it just brings out what's already inside of you. Yeah. But yeah, I was like that whole scene, I was just like and poor mother's will just like Huey teleported right in front of him and his and his dick is like right there in his face and he's just like I know Marvin is like between <laughs> Love Sausage last season and then that. I know he's like, you know what? I'm tired of dicks in my face. I'm just so tired of it. She gets old after a minute. Unfortunately for him, it's a running gag. Yeah. Like, uh, poor, poor mother's book. Mm. Like, through this whole, through, just through this whole thing, it's like, 
Uh, I still feel bad that that his ex wife is with a is with a little wimpy wimpy hero wimpy hero supporter like. Uh, like he like Todd gets on my nerves. I'm like, telling y'all, really there's something about that nerves. guy that's not right. Is and and oh no, it, it's not right. I, don't, I, mean, I mean, but I feel like he has something to do with more. I I don't know. He just something is so off with him. Yeah, and, and it's no, not I, just. I, the, I think he's just representative of the type of person that is into the seven and homelander that's his audience that's what todd represents i guess it it's their target audience he he's is their exactly, target audience yeah, yeah that's what it is he 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 i thought at first because of of marvin that maybe todd was a uh like a, a plant or a spy to spy on him but as i watched the episode and a little bit more further on down the line i think that he's just one of those people you know, who is um, like that. I mean, there are people that I know in real life who are so clueless about stuff that has happened over the last four or five years, and they will look you in the eye and they'll say, well, I don't know why you have a problem with any of this. Everything's fine. You know, and I'm not talking about anything specific, but you know what I'm talking about. And, and so he's just one of those people, you know, suburbia, you know, nice job, you know, all this and that. And he probably grew up bullied a little bit, probably grew up, you know, very uh, uh, religious or, or at least, you know, attended church on a regular basis. And so for someone like him to see Homelander and Queen Maeve and the Deep and all that, those are heroes. He's a middle-aged white man. He's the, he's the, he's the reason that, that um, Homelander has a, had a spike in popularity after his little speech during his birthday. He's, he, like right, you said, exactly. he's the target of, he's the middle-aged white man. Yeah. Yeah, but my question is, how are you going to be, I don't know, I just wonder how that's going to play out considering we know what that demographic is and we know what the implication is for that demographic. And you have a black wife and a black stepchild at home. How, I, I'm, I don't, mm -mm. have we established that they're married or they're just dating? I would assume. I would assume. I, I would assume that they would be married. The fact that they live in the house together, Monique. Just from what we know of her character, she doesn't seem like the type of woman that would just let a random man move into a house with her, with her and her child. Okay. And also, yeah, and also, MM. Even though they are not together anymore you know as as we talked about in the last episode they have a very good co-parenting relationship and they still care about each other and it's evident i don't think that he would allow somebody who could possibly be just a temporary person to move to into the, the okay. same house with his child well let me you know let me saying? ask yeah, let me, well, let me ask you this then. Do you think that, based upon what we have seen so far, do you think that there's a possibility that Todd might have, excuse my language, the balls to tell Marvin that he would like to adopt his daughter and just Hell have him sort of no. step no. God, no. <laughs> well, first of all, no. Marvin would kill him. That's, that's just without saying. I, but I, think he knows, I think he knows Marvin is on that on that edge of reason and insanity, I don't think he would push that button. No. Because there's a couple of times where he looked at, at at Marvin and he almost sort of implied that this is my kid, not yours. I mean, I got that vibe from him. So yeah. and, and Janine would not have that. She she would not allow that. Anyway. Janine um and um 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 what is the wife's name? Why did her name just escape? You just said Monique. What's her I, name? Yes, Monique. Monique. Thank you. I don't know why it just escaped me that fast. I don't know but why yeah. I said Janine. Mo Monique. She, well, Janine no. is the child, and she probably would not want that man to be her daddy anyway. Mm -hmm. But you know, when it comes to when it comes to things like that, you can't just adopt a child. Like literally, in order for Todd to adopt Janine, Marvin would have to give up. His rights. All of his parental rights. Right. And we know that shit ain't He's, about to happen. No, no, no. And she wouldn't all. even ask him to do that. Right. 
she wouldn't because you think Marvin is trying to hold himself together by a thread now mm. with his temper and his medications. Let Todd even think about fixing his mouth to say something like that. Then yeah. not even fix your mouth to say. Don't it. even fix your mouth Don't because you're gonna be you're gonna be plastered on the floor or plastered against the wall or something like. I think something like that. We will see the true capability of what Marvin is is mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, you know, that whole situation is just weird to me. But I will point out, Marvin's t-shirt game this season is on point. His t-shirt yep. game is always oh, yes. on point. Yes. Always on point. True. So, okay. Let's move away from them and let's go, let's go to Vault Tower for a moment because when I say thing, we said in the last episode, the seven is falling apart. They are falling apart. You know, this is the episode after hashtag home light has been introduced. You know, Huey, of course, like we said, he found out on TV that Starlight and Homeland are supposed to be a couple. And they're still going through with this, okay, we got to get rid of him by any means necessary. But now, Starlight is in even more danger than you thought she was going to be just for, you know, still being the co-captain, sticking it out. Now she's in a position where she pretty much is going to be tied to the hip to Homeland, or at least that's the indication that he is giving. He was like, yeah, you know, y'all can still do your thing, but this is my girl and don't interfere. Basically, that's the implication he gives. Then they have a meeting with the Seven where they're welcoming Supersonic and the Deep back. And Homelander continues on his racist, phony bullshit. With taco bowls. With the taco <laughs> bowls. Talking about, oh yeah, I'm bringing in a treat specially for you. And Supersonic is like, dude, I don't even really speak Spanish. It's <laughs> like, you keep pushing this agenda. And then the Deep Oh, this is muy delicioso. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, see, this is just they're they're drawing they're really going hard with the Homelander Trump parallels. Like they're going really hard at it. It's so. just it's it's bad. It's bad. Like again, Homelander's really starting to, or not even starting to fall apart. Homelander is falling apart. Or as we can probably say, Homelander is asserting his dominance. And it's getting to the point where even like Victoria Newman is worried about it. And Stan Edgar is like, oh, as long as I'm in charge, he's not going to be, he, he's not, he's going to continue to be threatened. He's going to be scared of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, Homelander is pulling out all the stops in, in, in this season. Like, he really, we see him from the, from the very first season when we meet Homelander, he is very much a company man in the sense of he has to toe the line, he has to do what they tell him to do because of the numbers, because of his position. And, like, it's literally obvious that Stan Edgar has him by the balls. Here we are two seasons later... And he is effectively checking off all the boxes of the people. Oh, okay, this person is in my way. Okay, let me fix it by doing this. This person is in my way. Okay, let me fix it by doing this. This person is out of line. Let me fix it by doing this. And it's causing so much tension, not just within the seven, but individually within the seven too. We see this big, um, we see this big scene between the deep and A Train, which I really I don't like neither one of these characters. They're both garbage. But to see them going <laughs> at each other, like trying to see, I'm I'm sorry, trying to see who can stick who can stick their tongue up to Homelander's ass the, the furthest. That's literally what this is between them. And I'm like, do y'all not realize Homelander don't give a fuck about neither one of you? Why are you sitting here trying to impress him so much? But I feel like this scene is also one of those where we really get to see just how low down and dirty Homelander will get in order to, it's like, 
he's trying to make sure that he has the loyalty of the team, but he's also making sure that he knows, okay, I- I'm going to play this piece against this piece. I'm going to play this piece against this piece. When he goes off on a train and the deep turns around and smiles at him like, Hey, he chose me. And then a train, you know, he, he goes off him and supersonic on the elevator and supersonic, you know, when he's, when a train is talking about, you know, fuck him, fuck this, da, 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 da. And supersonic gets it in his mind. Like, Oh, this could be another part of our bring down Homelander team. I was like, dude, that's the wrong, that is not the decision you want to make. That is not the decision you want to make. Well, nice yeah. knowing you. Uh, t- <laughs> He he was set up from failure from from the start, right? Yeah, he really was. And, I mean, and he should have left with Starlight fault, to leave. I I do fault Starlight for for bring trying to bring him in. Mm-hmm. You know, not really knowing like she thinks she knows him, but but you have this thing that you want to do that really requires people to keep things to themselves. You know, I don't think she envisioned him trying to recruit A Train to their cause, which is the dumbest shit ever for anybody. But see, he doesn't, he hasn't had a chance to learn the dynamics between everybody on the team. Right. Like, he should know that there isn't anyone other than Starlight that he can trust. Anyone, not even Maze. Yeah. Anyone. He just got there. She didn't want, she didn't even want him to be part of it. Right. She was trying to convince him to drop out. She was trying to get him to go home. I know, but but she was stupid for trying to recruit him into this situation anyway. Like, if anything, keep him out of it if you want to protect him. Don't bring him into it. And I know she feels like she's in a desperate situation, but sometimes people just need, she just need to take a step back. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and just you know pause take a break you know you don't even know where Super Sonic's head is at he's he just joined the team right. he's on the 7 this is lifelong dream he might not he might be like hey Homelander you know Starlight's got this plan to take you out you, you know, don't know I don't know if I think he would do that just I'm, I'm just saying I'm just saying you in this show you can't put it past anybody right you know what I mean the same. So it looks at first like A Train might be on the team. You know, they they're sitting there together. Who was it? it was him, Supersonic, Maeve, Starlight? It was just the four of them, right? Watching watching Victoria Newman's press conference, where they're thinking that she's about to name Homelander in you know, some crimes and he's about to be taken away. And then all of a sudden it flips because instead of naming Homelander, she names her surrogate father, Stan Edgar. And he's arrested and Homelander comes into the uh, conference room. And I was just like, now he's seen me in there. I did not see that going that way at all. I didn't. I didn't. I did not. I was like, I, I was shocked as much. I think I was more shocked than Stan Edgar was. I was just like, like, whoa, what? Like, we just, the fact that we just found out how close they were, like, an episode ago. We just found out that they're basically father and daughter, and then she turns and does this, like, yeah, and then he he's not even mad. He just kind of he, I, I he's kinda like, he probably okay, did the same thing I, I figured. That. Homelander found some way to get to her, and it probably had to do with her daughter. Yeah. So yeah. because it's the, it's this whole whole thing with Stan Edgar, like planning things and planning ahead of things and things like that. He probably as soon as it happened, he was like, oh, "Okay, I see what's going on." I see why she did that. I see what's what's probably getting ready to happen. He probably once he saw the plan, he was like, "All right, I can't be mad at that." I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if he already had the contingency in place. Of course, he does. Her having a child already makes her vulnerable. Mm-hmm. 
So he would have already had a contingency plan in place. Right. For if something happens, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't put it past him. Right. It may have, it may have been, it's, you know, I, I raised her. Mm -hmm. So it does, I mean, it didn't surprise him, but he's like, yeah, that's exactly what I would have done. Yeah. Now, my question is if, if you're home, Homelander, dude, who's going to run the company now? You don't know what the fuck is really going on. I know you think you're very, very smart and highly intelligent, but like, these large corporations have a lot of moving parts. <laughs> you know? You're going to get the person who you have under your thumb and who's going to do anything that you fucking say for a chance to be in that power. That shit going to be Ashley. Yeah. It's going to be Ashley because Ashley so far, she has the most interaction with him. And you see when he says jump, she says how high or which ledge. It's going to be her because in that sense, he's going to be able to control everything and anything that happens within Vault Tower. He's going to be able to know all of the working pieces and she'll probably spy on the others for him and report back to him what they're doing. But I don't know how competent Ashley is. She ain't got to be general. competent in that sense. You know? All she has to do is make sure that Homelander is the one that's on top, that Homelander shines. Right, but that's that awesome. doesn't but, but that doesn't run a corporation, a multinational corporation. Do you think Homelander Keeping, really cares about all of that? Th that's the point. Like, the whole, not only... See, he's undermining the seven. Mm -hmm. Like, the seven could be a really good thing for him, but he's undermining it. He's he's tearing them all down. And now he's going to tear down Vought. He's undermining Vought as well by tearing down Stan Nigger. Mm -hmm. So, like, at what point, Homelander, do... Well, basically, everything is spinning out of control. Homelander mm -hmm. is... is His insanity is affecting everything else. I'm just but, saying. But it but also that kind of tracks with the meeting that he had with Billy back in the first episode when he was like, Yeah, we both have a, a common enemy. We both want to bring down Vought. I think that's what he's trying to do. So he doesn't care about the company being run properly or this that, and that. All he cares about is what he looks like to people, how he appears to people. And if they're going with this, um, if they're going with this narrative of Vought being corrupt and Vought manipulating things, I mean, he said it in his own birthday speech. Yeah, they're manipulating you just like they manipulate me, just like they manipulate everybody else. If he's going to run with that narrative, the best thing he can do for his reputation is to bring down Vought that will make sure that any naysayers who think that, you know, who believe the other narrative that, oh, Homelander is not all quite there or whatever the case may be from the little, you know, contingent that may think that at this point, that's the way to knock his ratings out the park. That's the best way to make sure that everybody starts following him. Oh, you took down the biggest corporation in the world, not just in their city, Vought is worldwide. If he can take down Vought, he's got everybody under his thumb. Everybody. So he's like, yeah, let me start making these steps. But if you don't brought down the head of Vought now, what's going to be next for you? Those folks in the seven better watch out. Because he's, he's going to come for them. Right now, he's doing it through insults and jabs and that sort of thing he's about to start going after them because yeah. at this well, point he's already started with the deep well, poor yeah. timothy <laughs> but what but what i'm saying and i mean he started with a train as well he's controlling starlight fuck. at this point. <laughs> right he's controlling a train at this point he's already started getting into supersonic's head he's He's going to dismantle the seven because at this point, he probably feels like, I don't even need y'all. What do I need y'all for? Y'all are lesser superheroes than I am anyway. 
he probably feels like he can keep all the superheroes. He can keep everybody in line. Who's going to stop him? Like, there's no one stronger than him. No one as smart as he is. What what was that in his speech? He's damn near perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I just have a feeling, like I said, he started from the top and he's about to work his way down instead of going the opposite direction. Get rid of the big boss. Get rid of Stan Edgar because, again, that's the person you've been scared of. And even when they are in the, um, in the meeting room having the conversation, for the most part, at this point, Homelander is holding all the cards in his hands. And Stan Edgar is not even breaking a sweat. He's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, you did this and I didn't expect it. Going after Victoria, yeah, that was a smart move, blah, blah, blah. But then he just continues to insult Homelander in the most calm and professional way. Oh, you still looking for approval like I'm your daddy? He was like, yeah, the company is yours. You can take it. Nobody's left to stand up for you. But I think you're going to sorely regret that. And he just walks out the room. And I was like, kind of like what you're saying, Mike. Yeah, Stan Edgar is not worried about this at all. He he looked at him like, he, he said, the one thing, the one thing that we did for you is clean up your bullshit. Mm-hmm. Now you got to clean it up yourself. Deuces and Stan Edgar is going to disappear and he will never hear from him again. And he's just going to watch Homelander. Like, he probably knows that Homelander is going to self destruct. Mm-hmm. And what so else did he say? Like, You're not worthy of my respect. You are not a guy. You are simply bad product. And walked out the room. They walked out. <laughs> no one's going to be, I, I, no one's going to clean up your bullshit. You got to clean it up yourself. I, I really expected Homelander to kill him at that point, but he didn't. Which shocked me. Homelander is still scared of him because this, yeah. and this is the way this is the way I look at it. You have, like I said, Homelander has all the cards. He's holding everything. He could have easily killed Stan Edgar, and nobody probably would have batted an eyelash. Stan probably knew Homelander could kill him. He never once flinched. He never broke stride. He was still the same smooth motherfucker we have seen since season one. And he let Homelander know in no uncertain terms, you do not scare me, little boy, but you are scared of me. And he walked out of that room and Homelander did nothing. Homelander is still scared of Stan. And I think it's because of that, what you said, Mike, he knows Stan probably does have a contingency plan. But you think Stan trusted that plan with anybody? No. So yeah, I just yeah. He 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 knows better than to mess with Stan Edgar. And it, the it one thing goes, it goes further to cement the fact that Stan Edgar is basically Lex Luthor in this show. Like he has he has the plans, and everybody's scared of him, even though he's just a regular dude. Like he doesn't have powers, but his 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 superpower is contingencies that's his superpower and nobody fucks with it because they don't want they don't want to they don't want to incur his wrath and whatever he has and he has waiting for them in his closet like they don't want no parts of any of that what so is it we that's like to his, say that's he has superpowers. plans on plans on plans on plans yep and and i think he probably he may not have known that victoria was going to do what she did but he also knows that Victoria, whatever part she was going to play in his plans, she's going to keep going mm-hmm. that way because that's all she knows. She's going to keep doing what he wanted her to do. Like a lot of the things that he put in motion don't require him to micromanage. Right. You know, so he could just step off, he could disappear, and he'll be like, everything I said in motion is going to keep going, mm-hmm. keep going. Mm-hmm. And he just wait and just wait and watch. See what? Because remember what he told? He told uh, he told Robert. He told him we're gonna be out of the superhero business in five years. Like we're gonna be, we want to be done with this. Mm-hmm. You know, and and this could be part of his plan. Like, okay, well, I didn't see it happening this way, 
But the way I set things up, it could go this way somehow. Mm-hmm. Right. Because eventually, the superheroes are going to destroy themselves. I don't really have, have to do no, much. They have no... <sighs> These superheroes, I'm telling you, they, they have no... They have no... I can't even think of what I'm trying to say. They have no... Um... Why is my mind blank? <laughs> While you think about that, it's almost like the little fires everywhere. He's been this guy in this corporation running this company, and it seems like he's always putting out these little fires. Like, he's got this thing he's trying to do, but he's dealing with Homelander. He's got, you know, superheroes in Podunk, Alaska, fucking shit up. He's got to deal with them. So he's just, you know what? Let's just let all burn. Let's see what happens. Discipline, that's the word I was looking discipline, for. They, they have no discipline. They don't. He tries. He tried. I mean, that's, I think, the whole popularity thing, the whole watching the numbers, that is built-in control. Yeah. Because that that is what Vought has made important for the soups, is your popularity. Mm-hmm. Like, you go here, you patrol for a while. If you get popular, you get a promotion. You go to a better area. Oh, yeah. you can go from Podunk, Alaska to Chicago. You patrol Chicago, crime goes down. Hey, you become popular. Maybe you get a chance to be in the seven. Yeah. Yeah. So you, he ha- they have all this built-in control. Oh, my God. This sounds like the Matrix. It's built-in control <laughs> stuff that, you know, yeah. Neo, I mean, Homelander is tearing it all down. Mm-hmm. But he still is controlled by popularity Mm -hmm. as long as he controlled by the need to be loved and adored by the masses he can be controlled and like you said in the last few episodes when he no longer needs that that's when he's going to be a problem right but he has this need and desire to be loved and as long as he has that he can't be controlled yep but like i said he's starting to uh Started from the top, he's working his way down because he got Stan Edgar out of the way. And then what did he do next? He flies Starlight to a building where we see Supersonic. Or what's left what's of left Supersonic. Supersonic. <laughs> oh my God. He, that's, some, that's some psycho shit that he did to Supersonic. Like, what the fuck, dude? But who like didn't see that coming, though? He cut his, leg, cut his leg in half and just, like, destroyed him. Like, he took him off. But he probably didn't even break a sweat doing it, either. Mm-mm. And his face. Mm-hmm. Pummeled his face. Like, half of his face was gone. And what was it? He said, oh, yeah, A-Train told me about you. <sighs> he didn't this even have to finish fucking... that. He didn't even have to finish that that sentence. So as he said, A Train. I was like, you know what? If I was Starlight, I'd just go whoop A Train's ass right now. Like this motherfucker here. Just- it's like it's so hard because it's like there's certain things you see A Train. You kind of want to feel sorry for him, but then he does some bullshit like this, and it's like, fuck you, just fuck you. Like, well, Hanako God, said it you. earlier. A Train is one of the most self-serving superheroes. <laughs> Yeah. We've seen on this show. Yeah, he's exactly. still an addict. He's an addict. He You're cares never about not an nothing. Addict. Yeah, well, or or that he cares about his numbers too. He cares about what the public thinks of him and them loving him. You know, he he goes through this whole thing earlier in the show where he talks to Ashley about the whole blue blue hawk thing and how he wants to have a meeting with him to talk about the excessive force he's using in the black neighborhoods. And that was one of the things that he brings up in the meeting that they had, you know, the taco meeting. And the deep is the one controlled by his pup, you know, controlled by his puppeteer wife, who basically shoots that down like, hey, Blue Hawk has is in the same demographic as you, Homelander. We should want to protect him instead of, you know, putting him out there to, to dry or whatever. And Homelander agrees, and A Train is just kind of like, man, that was, you know, and that was kind of what started the fight between those two, because now both of them are trying to get in good, 
with Homelander as part of the seven and it's just not going their way and then you see the whole little thing later on with uh a train filming the the commercial the what was it the turbo the turbo drink or turbo turbo rush drink of his where you know the commercial is of him pretending that he's about to film something and then there's like a protest going on in a rally and he joins the rally and then you have the you have the black person facing off against the police and they're about to go at each other and he comes in and he stands between them and he gives them each a drink it, it's, it's like a really it's like that Kylie Jenner version. Pepsi commercial yeah it was like a really bad version of, of a Coke versus Pepsi commercial in the 80s you know well, and, Mike said it was a ripoff of that Kylie Jenner commercial that they did. Yeah, like a really bad one. I was like, Ugh, that's terrible. It's just, and then, of course, after they call cut on the commercial, you see his face immediately change. Like, he's all smiles and stuff while the camera's on. As soon as the cameras are off, he's sitting there looking like, what the fuck am I doing? Because you ain't, you ain't got no substance, eh, Train? Oh, let me tell you, this dude, and I know he's probably one of those superheroes. I don't know if they're going to, I don't know if they're planning on doing redemption arcs in the show. I don't know if A-Train is going to be one of the ones to get them. I think we talked about this in the last episode about the deep and A-Train and how neither one of those characters really deserve a redemption story. But if they give one, it's probably going to be him. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. After what he just did to, to get supersonic, no, no. I'm just I'm waiting for Homelander to handle him. I, I'm just I'm just waiting for it because at this point, a, a A Train is just he's trash. He's trash. He's trash. But of course, Homelander uses this opportunity to let Starlight know. Okay, yeah, you know what? There's gonna be no more plotting. There's no gonna be no more planning. Right now, you are going to be my loyal girlfriend, and we are sticking together. If not, you see your little ex-boyfriend over there? That's going to be your current boyfriend. That's going to be Huey. And at this point, Starlight has, what, what can she do? What can she do? The crazy thing was when she powered up and he was like, oh, stop it. You know how, you know how that's going to end? <laughs> that, that is that superior confidence that he has. That no one can challenge him. Nobody. Period. Nobody. Nobody. Dad, I mean, stop that. You know how that ends. Stop. Just stop. No, please, like that. That's just gonna typically stop. I'm gonna typically leave alone. Right. right. So it's like and now, as far as the seven, well, the six now, you have a train who was trying to kiss Homelander's ass so that he could be back in his good graces. You have the deep doing the same, being controlled by his wife. You have Maeve, who is pretending to a lot of people that she's still a drunk and that she's no longer training, when in reality is she is already sobered up and she's been training because, again, she has this focus now. She has to take down Homelander and she has to be prepared for when that happens. You have Starlight, who right now is probably going to be like, okay, you know what? There's nothing we could do against him. Like, he already killed one person because of me. I can't let him kill anybody else. And then you have Black Noir, who we really haven't seen so far in this. Uh, actually, we haven't seen the current version of Black Noir, I don't think, this season. Yeah, But I think so, for all intents and purposes, he's, he's still going to be Homelander's boy. So. Yeah. Yeah, because he's the one person who... He's a company man, too. So. Yeah. Mm hmm So, I just... Like I said, I, and I think we talked about this in the last episode, the seven is about to fall apart, and it looks like Homeland is about to start ticking some boxes off. He's about to start knocking some pieces off the chessboard, and... Um, I don't know. Something tells me he'll probably save... Starlight or May for last, but I don't think A Train and Deep are gonna be. They don't have too much longer to be on this team. I don't think because I think May, um um Starlight is only as 
as safe as her numbers. Yeah, exactly. Like, That's her numbers why I said are she'll ridiculously be, yeah. high, mm -hmm. and that makes her safe. Yeah. Maeve is safe because despite their issues, I think Homelander still kind of respects Maeve. I don't know if I yeah, would say and, respect. And, well, respect isn't a word, but he doesn't view her as that much lower than him. You know? Okay, yeah. He 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 I think he holds Maeve and Black Noir in high regard. Okay. But like the deep is disgusting. A train is a fat fuck who can't do shit. You know, Starlight, he doesn't really care about Starlight. Mm -hmm. Just for popularity. Right. You know? You, we saw what he thought of Supersonic. <laughs> yep. But we, we called that. What, what did we say? One or two more episodes, we felt like Supersonic was going to bite it. Basically. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think it was going to come that quick. But, you know, I thought maybe he had one more um episode before he got knocked out. No, nah, when when he told A Train his the plan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Once he did that, I was like, oh, oh yeah, he's not happen. making it through this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz A Train, like you said, is the most self-serving character on the show. Period. Yeah. I still think he might be redeemable though. I don't know I, if I'm I not sure. I don't know. I, 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 I gotta, I gotta agree. Uh, I can't, I'm not sure. I don't know. I thought so too, but after this shit, I mean, he he caused somebody to get killed. Like he had to, he had to know he had to know that he wasn't going to get a verbal reprimand from Homelander, Homelander if right. he told if he told if he told Homelander what he was planning. Mm -hmm. He knew that he wasn't going to be like now now don't plan against me. He he knew that there was a. 80% chance that Homelander was probably going to fucking kill him. He could have just but been like, easy. you may want to watch your back. Like, that, that could have been his mindset and not necessarily, oh, I tell him this, this motherfucker's going to blast Starlight and he's going to blast Supersonic. But you know I, what? I don't know if he really thought that. I don't think he did because now, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I don't think A-Train is aware, like fully aware or has firsthand witnessed the atrocities that Homelander has committed. No, because like his self-serving, he only is concerned about what's happening in front of him. Right. And <laughs> he probably not... thought, oh, he'll just be mad. He'll probably, he probably thought, okay, he'll probably do to them what he's been doing to me in the deep as far as like the insults, the veiled hate. But I don't think, I think in that sense, a train might be a bit naive to not mm -hmm. think that Homelander would have done something as horrible as murdering Supersonic. You know what, Hanako? I actually agree with that, but I also want to throw out the fact that uh, because he's a speedster, I know he's got a bad heart, but because of that, if Homelander decides that he wants to have a little conversation with A train on a good day, A train could basically tire him out. At running around the world a few times. He I could get away from him a, a little bit. I mean, he would get caught in the end, but at least he lived a few more minutes than most people. But my thing is, is that I don't think that Homelander respects A-Train enough to even care. That, that's that's what I think. I, I think I think Homelander would be like Superman in the Justice League movie when he was looking at Flash running like, yeah. <laughs> and the flash looking like, oh shit, this motherfucker's watching me rent at him. Right. right. That 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 would have been Homelander. Yeah, yeah what was it? Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that shift of eyes and, and the flash, like, holy shit, he's, he's... <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think I don't think A Train would stand a chance because yes, he is the fastest person or was the fastest person on his feet, something tells me Homelander probably would be able to catch him, whether or not he'd be able to fly to him, whether or not he'd be able to just shoot his laser vision and catch him in that way. I, yeah, I don't... You know, okay, I, I, think I, I talked about this oh. first season when we first started covering the boys, is that Homelander is basically set up to be the one. Like... He's mm -hmm. smarter, faster, stronger. He flies. 
He shoots laser beams. He's super hearing. He's Superman. He's a six million dollar man. Any, he's Superman without any weaknesses. That's who Homelander is. Mm -hmm. He's basically Omni Man. And Pretty if much. they train him against him, it would be just like the first episode of Invincible, where Omni Man right. catches Red Flash and pretty much like squishes in yeah, and plays yeah. squishy head. That's basically mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's and I'm just, but I'm to just your point, because you know, it's, you know, something like that has got to come. Oh, it's going to. Yeah. It has to. But, but to your point, I don't think Homelander cares enough about right. the train. Right. At all, yeah, no, and he in a train. I think he and the deep don't really have an idea of how far gone um, Homelanders because they're so caught up in their own bullshit. Mm -hmm. They don't see what's really happening. Right, they're not they really paying attention. And again, they like Stan ever said, other. they've spent so much time covering up all of Homelanders' bullshit that I don't think the other members know. Maeve only knows because she was present with him at she the was there. Yeah. And Starlight only knows because she's been fighting against him with the boys and she knows what he's capable of. But the rest of them, yeah, I don't I don't think they know. How would they? That means Stan would actually have to have brought them into that inner circle and just in the same token, I don't think Stan Edgar cares for those two either enough to say, hey, okay, let me let you know who you're really dealing with. No, he doesn't care. So. Oh, but yeah. Poor Alex. Rest in peace. I feel like we have to do a, um, we have to do an in memoriam thing after every episode now. We had Timothy in the last episode. We got Supersonic in this episode. Who are we going to have to do an epitaph for for next episode? He's I... praying. He's praying. <laughs> oh, God. I, like I said, the, the best stuff this entire season uh, on the B storyline is the stuff with the deep. I just, it's perfect. Um, I, 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 you know, as the episode was going on, I started getting really interested in how they're setting this whole story arc up because we talk about the grossness we talk about you know the sex stuff we talk about everything but the the way that they're putting the story together is really interesting because they're pulling different things and they're really giving us something that you really can't stop watching and mm -hmm. a lot of shows when they get to the second third fourth fifth season they sort of peter out and like the flash okay the flash just it just finished season eight I swear to God, if it wasn't for the fact that I've watched the other seven seasons, I wouldn't be watching The Flash because it's so ridiculous. There's no story. It's boring, you know. It's 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 in eight seasons. It's going to be yeah, nine oh seasons. Season nine is coming this fall. Yeah, yeah it's eight seasons. That, I stopped ridiculous. at the end of six. So. That is yeah. ridiculous. I but stopped after one. It's so, ridiculous. Yeah. But my thing is, is that these, like Arrow, love Arrow. Arrow is one of my favorites. It went at least two seasons too long. These shows, they they get to the point where they can't tell a story anymore because they've run out. So they should wrap. You know, the boys, uh, we're going, we just finished season three. I would be happy with season four, season five, be done. Don't outstay your welcome. Tell the story, get in and get out like Invincible. Invincible came in, told the story, they got out one season, perfect, next season coming. I mean, do it like that. Yeah, I mean, but I, I like the storytelling that they have been doing for this season. Like I said, it's it's one of those things where the show caught your attention because it was so different and it was so bold and it was so outrageous, you know? There was really nothing like it on TV at the time. And I feel like as the seasons go on, they are continuing to push the envelope. But instead of it just being about the shock value, about, you know, right. let's see how, how gross we can make it. Let's see how much violence we can make, uh, we can put in it. Let's see. Instead of it being just all of that, they are doing a very good job, for the most part, I would say, of fleshing these characters out. And showing us what make, makes these characters tick. And not only that, just kind of showing us how they interact with each other. 
and even with the so-called good guys, you can see a lot of parallels to from the boys to the soups. And you can see just as much good in the boys as you can see the bad. You know, like I said, Butcher, he's going a little too far this season. You know, and when the show started out, it was all about finding his wife. And the second season was about actually finding her and then kind of reconciling what had happened with her, this son that she has and trying to, you know, come to grips with that. And then, of course, you lose her so so suddenly at the um, end of the second season. And now it's just kind of like Butcher is also, you know, we keep talking about Homelanders off the reservation. So is Butcher. I think Butcher's at this point where he's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to kill that fucker, whatever, whatever it means. By whatever means necessary, I'm going to do it. That's why he's taking the temporary V. And, you know, it's one of those things where I think, Anthony, you, you made the statement something about when you get power, how it corrupts. And I just feel like it, that's what we're seeing with Butcher. And like you said, it also enhances the person you already were. We already knew Butcher was an asshole. We already knew that when it comes to the things that he wants or that he needs to get done, he's going to put that over everybody else, no matter what. And we see that in the way that he treats Frenchie and Kimiko in this uh, in this episode. Like, he basically talks down to them like... Uh, y'all forget whatever I say y'all do there's no there's no middle ground of course he can't do that shit with mother's milk <laughs> because and then was like no nah, I'm that's not me but it's just so interesting to see how these characters are and to kind of and to try to figure out what they're going to do and it's like we can kind of see where Homelander's trajectory is going with this character. We know he's about to lose his shit. We know it's about to be some, some, some violence and some issues. But even in the way his character responds to certain things, I think I'm still surprised a lot of times because he doesn't react in the way I expect him to. Like I don't make, I wasn't expecting for this season for Homelander for Homelander to have the patience to play the long game. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like he knows what goal he's trying to accomplish. And one of those goals is he's still trying to find his son, even though he hasn't really mentioned it in the last couple of episodes. But he knows he needs to bring down Vaught. He knows he needs to get rid of the people around him. And it's like he's the predator and he's treating all of the rest of the seven as his prey. And he's one of those people who likes to play with his food. So it's like he's sitting there. He plays with them a little bit. And I, I have cats. I've seen my cats do this. I've seen them chase a mouse, pounce on it, play with it a little bit, let it go, let it think it's getting away, and they'll pounce on it again, do the same thing. That is what Homelander is doing with the rest of the seven. Yep. He's playing with his food. And when he gets ready to snack, it's going to be some shit. But I, I don't know. It's kind of like at this point, I'm trying to decide. We're on episode four, which means we only have four more episodes left. Who's going to still be standing at the end of this season? The Deep. <laughs> That would be I terrible. You stick his tongue up Homelander's ass enough. I mean, but I mean, in that sense, A Train is doing it too. And A Train, A Train, yeah. will, he'll Both, survive too if, if he doesn't run. As long as he doesn't run, right? He's fine. But at some That's point, it. maybe they'll get on Homelander's nerves enough to he's like, okay, you know what? I don't want to deal with y'all. Right. But and Maeve, maybe Maeve, because like I said, Homelander doesn't really fuck with Maeve too much, so. And I, yeah, still don't, I, mean, I still don't think it's because of the video. I think he just they have a past. D4D. So it's like he yeah. still he still kind of remembers the good times that they had. You know, I mean, I think I think that he still. I mean, there's certain things that Homelander has a soft spot for, and it's like maybe maybe it's, you know, it's like you know maybe it's like it'll take a lot for him to actually, 
get to the point where he's like screw Maeve and try to get rid of her. Yeah. But I mean, cause, because he could have done that a long time ago. It's like from what happened with like on the flight, like everything else. I mean, it's like you said, like last season when he when he found out about her wife about about find out about her. You saw he was he was acting like a jealous boyfriend. He acted jealous as fuck. So he obviously he obviously still has some feelings for her because think about it. If you're a homelander, it's hard to find somebody at your level who you can actually not 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 worry about breaking for lack of a better term. Yeah. Like either like does like you know, not necessarily sexually, but it's like just someone you know who is strong enough to be your around your equal like close to your equal yeah. it's hard to find that and and he found that it may and it's like you know he just it's just he doesn't he, that's something that he doesn't want to let go of because mm-hmm. like i said it's, it's really hard to find that mm-hmm. okay oh I Can we go in depth about the dildos? We need to go in depth no, about the we're dildos. we're about to go there. We're about we're about to go to Russia. <laughs> we're about to go to Russia. I just need to get all that Homelander stuff out of the way because, like I say, Homelander he's been on this sprint downhill for a long time, and I think now he's just like he's in a full run. He's about to give A Train a run for his money. Um, yeah, it's gonna be um, uh, yeah. I just I'm worried about Starlight. I'm worried about Huey because if if he's gotten it in his mind now that okay Starlight is mine even though he knows she doesn't want him in that way yeah he was on the chopping block he needs to be careful even with the temporary v- okay yeah let's go to Russia because we got to talk about this stuff so Butcher has made a deal with little Nina Little Nina has got them passports. She's gotten them a plane so that they can get over to Russia and try to find this weapon that may be capable of killing Homelander. But one condition that he doesn't tell them until we get to Russia, they have to go and eliminate somebody. And they very specifically have to send Kimiko in because she has to go in like she's a call girl or a prostitute because this guy is having a sex party in his room and he's got all of these themed dildos that are representative of the seven. So I had heard rumors about there being a dildo fight scene. Like when when Karen Fukuhara talked about prep for this season she was like yeah i had to learn to fight with dildos i was like do i even want to know what's about to happen in this season so she goes in she sees the guy and he's about he's you know he's got the i I guess it was like the starlight i don't even who who wrote down the names of the dildos because i know one of y'all did mike i know you did (laughs) i know you. all right so so black noir is the silent the silent screamer. Um, wait, hold on. I didn't. I'm, I I I have the scene in front of me now. It's like you did already have this written down, Mike. I'm I thought so you were. I'm so I'm, 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 I was the deep I was flounder by the de- yeah, deep the flounder pounder. <laughs> um, the the star. What's home letters? The star spangled. Hold on. Homelanders is the Star Spangled Banger. The Deep is the Flounder Pounder. Black Noir is Silent Screamer. And that, that, that's the, those are the only three that I see right now. But it's like all those, I'm like, what the fuck? The Black Noir one has goggles. The Black Noir one had goggles on it. What? I'm like, why? why? I'm like, oh God. It's the boys. That's, why <laughs> it was it was i was like jeez actually 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 wanted to go to i wanted to go to like starship or somewhere to see if they actually made those there and is like, a website that they created you you remember i told you that the marketing for the boys is like mm-hmm. off the chain there is a website i think it's called uh soup porn 
And I don't know if you can actually go on that website. I haven't tried. I was like, I just, I, I'm not sure if I'm ready to dig that deep into it. But yeah, they have soupporn.com. And they were, that was part of the promotion for this episode. And the, the names of them are probably on that website. But yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm, no, I don't uh, think I'm. I don't think I need to go that deep into it. Let's just say that there are versions of all seven. Um, and what was, didn't they even have an invisible one that was supposed to be for translucent? It kind of looks like translucent, it, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. <sighs> Kimiko goes in. She sees the guy. He's using, you know, the dildos on some of the young, younger girls that are in there. And, of course, she looks at this and she's upset because she's like, okay, this is a monster. He's using, you know, he's got these women here for pleasure. And they, they most of the women looked pretty scared or, or pretty much like they didn't want to be there. So he's trying to tell her to take off her clothes. And I think, what was the first thing she did? Did she, did she take a dildo and she... she Put it in she just, she head? took she took the black black noir and put it through his through his head. And from there, of course, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, and it was on. So I was like, oh, bro. So she does that. She kills him, and then of course this henchman comes in. So she takes to killing all of them with uh, the dildos in some very creative ways. And then, of course, after this, you're being very kind. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying. You to really be, are. I just, yeah, it was a bit much. I mean, just, just go watch the scene if you haven't already. Which I'm sure anybody who's what who's listening or who's watching this video, you've already seen it, so you know what I'm trying to say. But the God, and the, plus, it doesn't help that dude is. Like the Russian oligarch they're set to kill is just creepy as fuck. Like he's like with his Versace gown, with his Versace robe on, and he's like, "Yes, on your hands and knees." But yeah, so he has like the starlight one in his hands, like uh, starlight star braider. Is that what it was called? I'm sorry, I have defiled my iP iPad. I'm going to do this. Yeah, you might, you might want, you might want to dip that in Clorox after you finish here. Man. Queen Maeve's Royal Reamer, A Train's oh. High Speed Railer. The Deep also has a pleasure vibrator. The See Through Penetrator. There's a Starlight plug. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> of course you gotta plug lights in I guess the I girl mean. power dominator okay Wait. for when you for when that, you want the girls to get it done well that yeah that is actually like looks like a cat of nine tail a flogger and a swing set <laughs> oh my god that's the girl power dominator the hush hush is a ball gag there's a uh, six. Oh, they have. Explosion. They actually have more things than what we saw in the episode on yes. the website. Wow. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Translucent glass dildo. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the big red one was. That was Queen May's royal reamer. But then they have. Well, what was the one named after Homelander? Um, That's the Star Spangled Banger. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, I I do remember that name. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Curiously, that one is not on here. <laughs> Maybe it's sold out. <laughs> Say it. Lori, oh, you God. are way too quiet <laughs> during this discussion. So it's like... <laughs> I'm not old enough to have this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I can't look anymore. I'm distracted. Okay. Okay. Despite the scene, this scene, this is a great fight scene. But the scene afterwards where Ashley's talking to um the the newscaster guy. Wait, 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 we'll get there. We'll get there. Because in this scene, after she kills everybody, one of the girls actually shoots her in the head. Right. And I'm sitting there looking at that like, 
I couldn't remember if she if, if that was something that would I couldn't at this point I couldn't remember if you know I was like okay so does she die like what are they going to do and then of course you know the bullet kind of falls out of her head as she gets up but the crazy thing about it is these girls are now scared of her because of what she just did to these guys these guys that pretty much was you know were were using them for pleasure who knows if they were even there like they probably weren't there legally they probably had been kidnapped or they probably had been sold to them but she's the one that they're afraid of and that hurts her so much because yeah. all she wanted to do was save them and it just it really kind of I think it shapes her attitude and the way that she thinks about Butcher and everything else for the rest of the episode. Because at this point, she tells Frenchie, you know, when she does go back, she was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Why are we doing this? Let's just leave. Let's go. And I think at this point, she's almost pretty much convinced Frenchie because Frenchie is like, I don't want to be here doing this either. So how about this? We finish this job and then we go. We go to Marseille and we just we just leave all this behind. And I'm like, I want to be happy, but at the same time, I'm like, this you is know it's not gonna way they won't. Right. They won't. Okay, Mike. Now we can get back on the dildo train and you can talk about uh what's his name? Cameron, whatever, Cameron Coleman and his meeting with Ashley about the newscast. That scene was funny too. Oh my god. It's like it's so funny. Like she's going over like everything that is going on now that Homeland is in charge. She's like, okay, everything, all your talking points come from me now. And she's like, okay. She's like, okay, yeah. He's like, yeah, these, she's like, these talking points are like, like it came from a room full of monkeys. Like, they're really bad. And he's like, I wrote it, ma'am. he said, I'm sorry. And she's like, is your idiot brain getting fucked by stupid? Because said, that's what <laughs> Homelander said to her earlier. <laughs> And, and he was like, kind of trying to laugh it off. She's like, that's not rhetorical. Answer me. And I'm like, hold up. The tone just changed. Like, you, it's like, oh, wow, the tone just changed in the room. And she's, and he's, he's looking like, oh, I'm kind of with this. Okay. Uh, what if I said yes? No, you got it. Because yeah. she brought out the dildo when she, when she made the tone. Not yet. Thing. Not yet. No, she said, really? She said, then I would have to punish you. Oh, yep, you're and, right. And he asked, he said, how would you punish me? And then she reaches in and is like, right. boom. But it's not just a dildo. It's on a, it's on a harness. That thing was huge. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's on a harness. Huge. Like, it all of a sudden I got. One too. Yeah, exactly. He's like, my idiot brain is getting fucked by a stupid ma'am. And then it's like, all I heard was Billy Dan in the background like, <laughs> It will come back to you. Peg. That Ashley, let me tell you, girl has got some kinks. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> I mean, see, I, it's like you have—you kind of have to wonder. You kind of saw it in Ashley in the first episode when she was fucking the director. Like she, she likes to be like the one because. She had, there's she doesn't really have that much. She's not really in charge in her work life, so all that has to carry over to her mm -hmm. private life, where she's like, you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna handle all this shit. If I can't handle this shit, this shit, I'm going to be in charge of, mm -hmm. and that's just how it's gonna be. And that show, um, that was looking at that was like, oh fuck, like damn, oh shit. And he was, I mean, the guy, it's like, dude was like, <laughs> like, I'm surprised they, they just didn't go ahead and start going over safe words. I mean, like, I, I mean, I, I don't know that they would necessarily need them from the way that conversation took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, they both looked, um, they both looked pretty amenable to whatever was about to happen. I, I thought that escalated quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That shit, that shit took off from a standing position. Like, damn, like, they're talking business. Next thing you know, it's like, whoo! But, I'm I mean, looking. I, was like, I was like, all right then, Ashley, get what you, get yours. Yeah. So yeah. the mural beh beh behind Ashley, you know, it has like the, um, 
the carvings of it's supposed to be the seven there's only six up there there's the deep is still not there so i just thought that was a little interesting but yeah, yeah homeland actually, kind of sprung homeland kind of sprung the deep on them at the last minute yeah so but ashley oh i'm telling you i don't know if she if she were able to stand up for herself i think she would be a pretty good ceo but she just she's not a madeline stillwell you know madeline stillwell she she knew how to kind of pamper homelander and still do what she needed to do <laughs> you know what yeah yeah you yeah. said she's it not, not me not madeline she, she ain't madeline, madeline stillwell man right? madeline stillwell had her by a couple of cup sizes i'm sorry you said pamper not me pampered pampered yeah. burp fed bottled yes and all that yeah yeah <laughs> but she I, know, I don't think ashley is lactating either so well yeah no because i think that would be that would be a whole that would be a whole different thing with with I, well you know what no no because i think one of the things that appealed to Homelander about Madeline Stillwell is the fact that she was very maternal, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that wasn't just because of the fact that she had a child, the way that she pampered him and the way that she, you know, kind of manipulated him. Yes. I'm going to keep saying, cause that's what she did. She pampered him. She treated him like a baby. I don't, know, I don't know if she literally did that, but you know. No, she treated him like a baby. She, oh, right. she really that, did. That came in. And I think that was one of the things that kind of kept him maybe not calm, but it was one of the things that controlled him in that first season was, was the way that she treated him. Ashley, even, even if she was, let's say, a mother, even if she did have that that you know, even if she was lactating and, and was able to provide that service for him, she is not the maternal type at all. And I just don't think Homelander would ever see her in that sense because of that. Like, I feel like she could be brutal and she could be hard in order to get what she wants in life like okay she wants to be C ceo she's going to kiss whoever's ass she has to do in order to get that and that's cool but when it comes to what homelander wants she doesn't she doesn't provide that for him and maybe that's the other reason why like you said he may have this soft spot for Maeve, or why he's kind of latched on to starlight because even though those two women are tough they are more they are more feminine in that sense, and they're more, I won't say, I won't say that they're submissive because in a sense, Ashley is as well, but Ashley is very dominating when she talks to other people and the way she treats other people, and Maeve and Starlight are not really like that. Maeve is a little bit, but it's more so because she's trying to keep people at arm's length. You know what I'm saying? I don't think she's that way specifically because she's a cruel person. And we know Starlight is probably one of the sweetest people on the whole entire show. And I think that's probably what kind of appeals to Homelander too. Maybe he's like, okay, maybe if I can get her on my side, it'll be okay. But Homelander. But yeah, we, we, we do see in this episode, he did threaten Victoria Newman's child. And as a result of her doing what she wanted, you know, what he wanted her to do, he has brought her a vial of V and that's the way that she feels like she's going to protect her daughter. She injects the daughter with the V. Now, I don't know what kind of effects, I can't remember from first season, like what kind of effects that will have, that will have for a person who is getting it for the first time at an older age. But we know it didn't do it didn't do very well for A Train, but A Train already had B in his system. So I'm I think Vault found Vault found it was easier to do it in in children than it was in adults. Okay, because I think most of those people that Lamplighter were watching were adult experiments. Right, right. You're right. 
I forgot about those experiments. Yes. Yeah, that, that, I think that's an abandoned storyline. Because remember that one soup that, that escaped? The one that Lamplighter was worried about? The one that looks like Eleven? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw, you know what? It's yeah, funny that's... enough, funny that you say that because I actually saw a meme about that earlier today. About, uh, said the writers forgot about this. Uh, like, oh, I forgot about this character. Oh, the writers did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that was an abandoned storyline. Well, I mean, you never know. We may see her again. I I have a feeling we might. I don't know if we'll see her in this season, but I, no, I we're not gonna ever. <laughs> the, you don't think so? No, I think, you think I think so? they had they were gonna go somewhere with that and decided not to. I wish it would because that would that be. Maybe, 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 they'll, maybe she'll come in and fight Newman. Maybe they'll, they'll be like the Battle of the, Bus, Battle of the Busters. It's very similar to, this is not a spoiler for people who watch Stranger Things, but the, um, the what was it, number six? Whatever that, her name? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. She, that, they abandoned that storyline too. Yeah, but you know, and I thought about that too. Like, okay, uh, the Eleven's quote unquote sister. Yeah. From what was that second season? I think it was second season. Second season. Then the Eleven one. was off by herself. Yeah, and it was like and a, she had. It was, I think it was a backdoor. Little... Yeah, I think it was a backdoor oh, yeah. pilot okay. for a right. potential show that maybe didn't quite like work off. out. Yeah. But yeah. maybe that other soup is related to Victoria. We just don't know it yet. I, I don't know. But yeah, that's that's one of those forgotten storylines. Um, let's see. Um, don't, I think I'm, really, I'm really interested to see what powers that Victoria Newman's daughter ends up getting since she gave her V. She, she injected her with the V. It'll be interesting to see if she gets like the same powers as Victoria does oh, or God, if she gets I like a not. different set. I hope not. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Kamiko survives <laughs> being blasted by yes let's, the boy yes, I, I let's felt so bad part. I was like let's I mean when she when part. she got and the bad thing about it the bad the worst thing about it is that when they were driving back and mother's milk and Frenchie were trying to get her to wake up and trying to save her life it's like Huey is Huey's in the front seat like with his arm out the window just like Oh, look at my blood flowing Huey through my veins. Huey is Please. high. That's what I it's feel like. He's high up He is like, high off the power that he has gotten from his temporary V that mm-hmm. he stole. And, um... Yeah. But they're concerned that, that Kamiko is not healing. Not healing yeah. and, that's, and that's she's unconscious. Yeah, that's a problem. Which shows that, home, which shows that, that Soldier Boy is the weapon. Yeah. To be able to take care of um, Homelander. So, because we just saw her get shot in the head and die and right, come back. Right, That's the second time right. she's done that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. But so, also, yeah, that's true. we gotta yeah. talk about this damn hamster. <laughs> was it? Was it a Jamie? <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> so while they're in this uh, this Russian lab trying to find a weapon, you know, they they look and they see this hamster in a container, and like. It's so weird because they start having a conversation with this with this hamster and they're they're trying to figure out what they're doing with it. And then the hamster starts like he starts spinning back and forth. Yeah, pinballing and about to break the glass. And at the same time, this is when the Russian soldiers come in getting ready to attack. So of course all hell breaks loose. This is when Butcher reveals that he has powers and he's kind of cutting through all of the soldiers. One of the soldiers almost gets Busher, and that's when Huey teleports and takes his heart out and realizes, you know, what his powers are. But the other thing is, I think, was it Frenchie? Frenchie was about to be shot. And this hamster came to his aid and rescued him and killed the soldier. And I was just like, okay, so do we have a new member of the boys now? <laughs> right. <laughs> But of course, it's the mascot. It's it's the it's now the boys' mascot. It's like Jimmy, right? Or some yeah. But anyway, so they turn around, they see this chamber, and open it, and they realize that Soldier Boy is inside, 
And of course, this is where we see Jensen Ackles make his actual debut as present day soldier boy. He comes out of this cryo chamber. Of course, he has no clothes on. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, the ass that broke the internet because like literally you could not download or you cannot even get onto this episode for hours after it dropped. But anyway, Soldier Boy comes out. He's got the beard. His hair hasn't been shaved. He's kind of disoriented. And they're all looking at him. And when he gets out, he looks around and he realizes where he is. And then all of a sudden, the camera focuses on his feet. And you see like the little dirt and everything start to rumble on the ground and then his chest starts glowing and it makes a sound like it's powering up and Frenchie is directly in front of him so Kamiko runs towards him and she knocks him out the way just as Soldier Boy's blast comes at her and it ends up impaling her on you know a, a, a rebar or something like that yeah. I think which is so which was so funny to me because if you, uh, spoiler, if you watch the final episode of Supernatural, that's how Dean bites it. Dean gets impaled on a rebar. So I was like, oh, y'all, y'all are not funny. This is not cute. But yeah, so she gets hurt. They try to get away. She's not healing. She's unconscious. At this point, it looks like she's about to die. And then, of course, the episode kind of uh, it goes into the whole uh, Starlight, Homelander, and Supersonic Death thing. But yeah, and Soulja Boy takes off running, so we don't know where he is, but he's the weapon, apparently. You know, we don't know what kind of effect it's going to have on Kamiko at this point. We just know she's not healing, she's unconscious, and you have a weapon running around Russia somewhere. So yeah, welcome, welcome to the show, Soldier Boy. Yep. <laughs> Shit is about to get really crazy. Soldier Boy, tell him. You know, what Soldier I'm Boy up in this hole taking parts from Kimiko. Watch him. <laughs> you know what? I'm in there right there because <laughs> that is perfect, and it's storming in our area. So we're gonna close this out before. <laughs> The lights go out, and if we have anything else to say, we'll pick that up on the next episode. But for now, that's it for our show. You can find us online at www.phantomhybrid.com. We are on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Phantom Hybrid. You can watch our videos on our YouTube channel and listen to us on all major podcast streaming platforms. Thanks for listening. We hope you join the conversation next time.